Thanks to ACS Central Science for supporting PBS Digital Studios. This is gold. This is water. Well, that's boring. But this is called royal water. And this is chemistry. Today we're talking acids, but before we get rolling, a strong note of caution. All the demos in this video were done by a highly trained chemist in a chemistry lab fully equipped to deal with the substances we're showing. No one out there should even attempt these demonstrations without the right facilities, training, or equipment. <sighs> now that we're clear on that, acids clearly are reactive. Who hasn't been totally blown away in chemistry class just by mixing some boring old basic baking soda and acidic vinegar? Okay, some more than others. Here's baking soda reacting with strong acids, even after they've reacted with some of the other stuff we're gonna show you in this video. That clump of baking soda is bubble surfing because the reaction is so vigorous. You don't get that with plain weak acid vinegar. So how do acids work and why do chemists value them so much? The classic definition of acids is that they throw off hydrogen ions, AKA protons. Protons are reactive little things because nature in general hates to concentrate charge into a single point. When a loose proton comes upon certain molecules, an electron melee ensues and we're left with new products. For example, an acid plus a metal will form hydrogen gas and a salt of the metal and the rest of the acid molecule. And if you're thinking table salt, that's one kind, but there are lots of others. In chemistry, a salt just means a metal plus a nonmetal. So those bubbles when we stick this here metal thing into hydrochloric acid are pure hydrogen. That gray stuff is forming an aluminum chloride salt. Because this is reactions, we need to mention that this model of how acids work is not the only one. A more general rule says that acids love to grab electron pairs from other molecules. That rule lets chemists talk about acids even if they don't have any hydrogen in them, but that's for another video. But regardless of the theory you use, acids can be really useful in the chemistry lab. Centuries ago, the alchemists figured out that acids like hydrochloric or nitrate could do a real number on metals, even metals that don't seem to rust or melt under normal conditions like forgetting them outside or throwing them in the oven. Have another look at the hydrochloric acid having a go at the aluminum. And here's nitric acid going to town on some copper. That's right, copper. That stuff that aside from a little surface vera degree makes for some pretty lasting landmarks. Even silver isn't safe from nitric acid, although we didn't have any of the shiny stuff kicking around to show you. So this ability of acids to readily chew up metals could make for some clever detective work. It's gonna allow us to figure out whether this here gold is the real McCoy or a shameless fake. These hunks of billionaire tissue paper look the same to the eye. This one dissolves in two of these vials, but this one only dissolves in the last vial on the right. Left to right then, we've got our diluted sulfuric acid, then hydrochloric acid, followed by nitric acid, then this regal water that we'll get to in a sec. This is imitation silver, which happens to be aluminum. Regardless, that's still a metal that you probably know from kitchen experience doesn't do anything even vaguely interesting if you splash it with lemon juice. But here's what it does when subjected to strong acids. Now here's some copper foil. Look at those green hues in the nitric and the dark blue in the vial on the right. We expected a deep blue color in the sulfuric, which was our first hint that that acid had something wrong with it. Now let's look at these two sparkly golden foils. They both look pretty expensive. Here's foil A in the acids and below is foil B. Chemistry tells us they can't be the same thing because they're not doing the same thing. A is reacting in the two rightmost vials, but B is only doing anything in this vial of goldish red. That is a liquid of near magical properties passed down from way back when chemists were still alchemists. That is a vial of royal water, which you might've heard of according to its Harry Potter-esque moniker, Aqua Regia. This stuff is made from three parts hydrochloric and one part nitric acid. Unlike the aluminum, the copper, or metal A, this metal B doesn't do anything except in the Aqua Regia. That means metal B is gold. Let that sink in for a minute we've just dissolved real gold. Okay, so we did it at the top of the episode, but let us have this. Yep, Aqua Regia dissolves the noble metal of gold, hence its royal name. So this begs the question, oh, what the heck is metal A? It reacts the same as the copper. Looking at its label, we're told it too is a mix of copper and zinc, making it plain old boring brass. Not only did we dissolve gold, but we were able to spot an imposter all by throwing acids at them, making us chemistry detectives coming next fall to CBS. Okay, probably not. Big thanks to Dr. Matt Hardings, a professor at American University here in Washington, DC. Again, Matt is a trained professional, allowing us access to a facility where these demos can be done safely. Thanks, Matt. 
Let us know in the comments if you'd like our take on super acids, but we gotta say, we're not doing demos for those ones. Thanks to ACS Central Science for making this video possible. Acids can do all sorts of chemistry, from catalyzing reactions to helping us investigate the origins of life. You can read about them and more in the American Chemical Society's premier open access journal, ACS Central Science. It's free to both authors and readers. Click the link in the description to find out more. Stay safe, everyone. Remember to thumbs up and subscribe, and thanks for watching.